हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू मेमो नीट आई एम अप्राजिता योर केमिस्ट्री एस एम ई आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग गुड सो स्टूडेंट्स हाउस द प्रिपरेशन फॉर बी पी टी फॉर गोइंग ऑन सो इट्स ऑन ट्वेंटी थर्ड जून सो आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर वेल प्रिपेयर फॉर दैट सो वी आर जस्ट लेफ्ट विद वन टॉपिक फॉर द चैप्टर सो इन येस्टर डेज topic we discussed chemical bonding and molecular structure in which we talked about various types of chemical bonds that are present okay various theories so today we will be learning more about the different theories that is the uh, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory the molecular orbital theory and the valence bond theory so these are the theories which we will be discussing today okay so if you have not watched the first video lecture please go and watch the first video lecture first and then we will come back and watch this one okay so let us uh, start with the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory first so students we have already discussed that the lewis concept is unable to tell us about the shape of the molecules so this valence shell electron pair repulsion theory it gives us a quick idea about the shape of the covalent molecules okay so it can it tells us that how can we predict the shape of various covalent molecules okay so that's the first theory that we are going to study today that is the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory now the main postulates of this theory are the it says that the shape of the molecule depends on number of valence shell electron pairs means how many electron pairs are present in the valence shell of an atom be it bonded be it non bonded okay it can be the bond pair also it can be the lone pair also so actually the shape we will be deciding using the number of valence shell electron pairs okay so actually these electrons are negatively charged right and you know that like charges repel each other so the second postulate it states that the pair of electrons in the valence shell they repel one other uh, one another since the electron clouds are negatively charged so if both, all of them are negatively charged so they are going to repel each other okay the next one is students these pair of electrons they tend to ma occupy such position in space that minimize repulsion and maximize distance between them why because if the repulsion is more the molecule or your uh, compound would not be stable okay so the electron pairs will occupy such such positions in space such that the repulsion is the least and the distance between them is maximum because that is going to lead to stability okay that will lead to stability of the molecule okay next point is the valence shell is taken as a sphere with electron pairs localizing on the spherical surface at maximum distance from one another okay means the uh, central atom whatever the central atom is or the valence shell is it is taken as a sphere and the electron pairs will be localizing over it at the maximum distance from one another because maximum distance means minimum repulsion okay so if there is a multiple bond it is treated as a single electron pair and the two or three electron pairs of a multiple bond are treated as single super pair okay now if there are resonance structure then what we will do so it says that whenever there are two or more resonance structures the vesper model is applicable to any such structure okay now the thing is that it talked about the repulsive interactions this is very very important so when you might have uh, known about the lone pair and bond pair till now i have discussed in the last session so the electrons that are not present in any bonding they are known as lone pair of electrons so the repulsion between the lone pair and the lone pair would be the maximum okay lone pair lone pair repulsion is maximum then lone pair bond pair repulsion is there and the least one is the bond pair bond pair repulsion so based on this order we can predict the shape of the molecule okay so then there were two scientists nylom and gillespie they ref refined the vesper model okay so actually they explained the important differences between the lone pair and bond pair of electrons so they actually said ki jo lone pair hai they are localized on the central atom okay they will be localized on the atom but the bonded pair are shared between the 
two atoms okay of course if they are present in bonding they will be shared between the two atoms right so that is why the lone pair of electrons occupy more space as compared to bond pair so this is the reason students ki the repulsion between the lone pair of electrons the lone pair lone pair repulsion is more than lone pair bond pair or bond pair bond pair repulsion because they are occupying more space as they are localized on the central atom but the bond pair are shared between two or more atoms okay so based on this uh, actually vesper theory predicted the uh, shape of the molecules at such there is no theoretical concept for it they just gave the shape of the molecule that we need to remember now let's say i will be taking it on the basis of electron pair okay so let's say if we are having two electron pair on the central atom okay so what would be the case the first case can be ki both of them are bonding pairs okay so agar do electron pair hai so both of them will be bonding pair for example becl2 beryllium chloride so in that case the shape of the molecule would be linear okay so it would give you linear shape so we can say students that a ab2 type molecule in which there is zero lone pair of electron so it will be linear in shape like becl2 now if i talk about ab3 type molecule now what can happen in that case is that there must be three bond pair and no lone pair like ab3 type molecule with no lone pair so its shape would be trigonal planar means its geometry would be trigonal planar in which all the three uh, atoms will be in one plane at an angle of 120 degrees okay for example so3 molecule sulfur trioxide but if there is one lone pair okay so if there is one lone pair like in so2 so if it would not have been a lone pair you see the shape would have been trigonal planar but if there is a lone pair now just now we have seen ki lone pair bond pair repulsions are more than the bond pair bond pair repulsion so because of this lone pair bond pair repulsion the angle the angle reduces from 120 degrees and it gets a bent or an angular shape okay so in the same way if you are having four electron pair student so here you can see like in the case of methane okay so it's an ab4 type molecule so please remember if you have ab4 type molecule with no lone pair of electron so in that case the shape is going to be tetrahedral means all the four uh, atoms would be at the four corners of a tetrahedron like this all right so that is going to be the shape and the bond angle is going to be 109.5 degrees in a tetrahedron but if i talk about lone pair so if there is one lone pair like in the case of ammonia all right now there are three bond pairs and one lone pair so again because of the lone pair bond pair repulsion the bond angle reduces to 107 degrees from 109.5 and it is going to have a pyramidal shape okay pyramidal shape would be there and if there are two lone pair and two bond pair like in water so it will be having a bent shape h2o molecule is having a bent or a v shape now similarly with a five electron pair students we can see it's a trigonal bipyramidal geometry okay like ab5 molecule with no lone pair so these three like if you have these three bonds so these three bonds are called equatorial bond which lie in a plane okay and they have a bond angle of 120 degrees okay and there are two bonds which lie perpendicular to the plane means 90 degree to the plane and these are known as axial bonds so these are axial bonds and this one are equatorial bonds so this is your trigonal bipyramidal geometry but again if there is a lone pair so it becomes a seesaw shape okay lone pair now lone pair can have this axial position and equatorial position also but if it is at axial position then there will be more lone pair lone pair or lone pair bond pair repulsions so that is why it will occupy an equatorial position so lone pair will come at equatorial position and it would be more stable then we have trigonal bipyramidal again if there are two lone pair so t shape would be there and if there are three lone pair so it would be linear all the lone pairs will be in the equatorial position so keep that in mind ki lone pair will always occupy the equatorial position now if there is 
six electron pair so in six electron pair we have octahedral geometry if there is no lone pair a b six type molecule okay so again there will be these four bonds in the plane all right and two bonds above and below the plane but again if there is one lone pair so lone pair will be occupying this axial position it will be square pyramidal and if there are two lone pair so it would be square planar in this case the lone pairs are occupying the axial positions so students this is how using the vesper theory or valencia electro pair repulsion theory we can tell or predict the shape of the molecule so we just saw ki how the lewis approach tells us about writing the structure of the uh, compounds but it fails to explain the chemical combination right similarly vesper theory it tells us about the shapes of the molecule but it does not have any theoretical explanation for it right why this shape is there and why that shape is there and otherwise it has limited application so because of these limitations there were other two theories which we call as valence bond theory and molecular orbital theory which are actually based on the quantum mechanical model of the atom okay quantum mechanical model we studied now in structure of atom so these theory are based on that so valence bond theory let's uh, discuss that it was introduced by hitler and london and it was developed by pauling and others okay so actually uh, this valence bond theory is based on the knowledge of atomic orbitals electronic configuration of elements overlap criteria of atomic orbitals hybridization and so much like i told you now it is based on the quantum mechanical model so to understand this first of all let's understand the formation of hydrogen molecule because it's the simplest molecule okay now there are two hydrogen atoms a and b okay like let's say h a and h b are two hydrogen atoms which Which are approaching each other. So H A has a nuclei N A and electrons E A means only one electron. Similarly, H B has a nuclei N B and electron E B. Okay. Now what happens is here you can see in this picture when the two atoms are at a large distance. Okay. There is no interaction. Of course, there will be no interaction between them. They will be separate. But when these two atoms approach each other. new attractive and repulsive forces begin to operate now what will be the attractive forces so you know ki attractive forces will be between opposite charges so it means it will be between nucleus of one atom and its own electron means na and ea and nb and eb but there will be attractive force between na and eb means nucleus of one atom to the electron of other similarly nb and ea so these will be the attractive forces here you can see h a e a h b e b similarly h a e b and h b e a so these are the attractive forces now repulsive forces will also be there between the two nuclei okay n a n b and the two electrons e a and e b so what attractive forces are trying to do here is they are trying to bring the atoms close whereas the repulsive forces are trying to push them apart okay so it was found out experimentally that the magnitude of the new attractive force is more than the repulsive force okay so if attractive force is more what happens students the atoms will approach each other and potential energy will decrease okay at energy decreases means ultimate a, a stage of stability will reach now a stage will reach where the net force of attraction balances the force of repulsion okay and system will acquire minimum energy minimum energy means maximum stability okay so at this stage these hydrogen atoms are said to be bonded together to form a stable molecule so we get that mo molecule h2 which will be having a bond length of 74 picometer okay and you know whenever here energy like bond is being formed now so of course the system is achieving a low energy state means energy get released so since energy uh, gets released when bond is formed between two hydrogen atoms so hydrogen molecule will be more stable than that of isolated hydrogen atom and this energy is called bond enthalpy okay the energy released when the bond gets formed okay 
so now let us discuss how these atoms actually combine okay so i told you now uh, the earlier theories did not talk about the combination chemical combination of atoms and all of that but this theory talks about it now there is this orbital overlap concept now what does that says it says in the formation of hydrogen molecule so we get a minimum energy state right so there is a minimum energy state when two hydrogen atoms are so near that their atomic orbitals undergo part partial interpenetration means jo bhi atomic orbitals honge they will interpenetrate each other means they will merge with each other so this partial merging of the atomic orbitals is called the overlapping of atomic orbitals which results in pairing of electron so if you have this one hydrogen orbital having one electron this one having one electron they will come together minimum energy state will release a reach and ultimately a stage will come where there will be pairing of electrons okay and how much overlap will happen that will decide the strength of covalent bond so extent of extent of overlap decides the strength of covalent bond means greater the overlap stronger will be the bond formation okay so that is why this orbital overlap concept says that the formation of covalent bond between two atoms results by pairing of electrons present in valence shell having opposite spin okay so whenever pairing of electron will happen they must have the opposite spin so this is what valence bond theory or the overlap concept says about the bond formation okay so according to the orbital overlap concept here we saw this thing right ki the pairing will happen and here you can see this is the 1s orbital of the first hydrogen atom 1s orbital of the second hydrogen atom and they will combine here you can see pairing will happen and these electrons will be there so this is overlap um now this overlap between two s orbitals it is forming hh sigma bond now what is this sigma bond we will discuss okay now the thing is students ki whenever these orbitals they come together to form bonds now they are all their overlap may be positive negative or zero depending on the sign of the orbital wave function sign and direction okay now actually uh, you must have like some a little bit confusion about it so basically what happens is positive and negative sign on boundary surface diagram show the sign of orbital wave function okay it's not charge it's the sign of orbital wave function so orbitals which are forming bonds they must have same phase or orientation in space okay this is called positive overlap here you can see like if there is a pz orbital it is having minus and plus uh, phase and this one is there plus and minus so if plus and plus are overlapping with each other we call it as a positive overlap similarly if plus and minus is there we call it as a negative overlap as you can see here in this case also this is a positive overlap between pz and s orbital similarly this is the negative overlap yahan pe between two p orbitals positive positive negative negative so this is positive overlap this one is negative here also it's positive is negative here there is zero overlap right so this is zero overlap because unke orientation hi alag hai they are oriented towards different directions x and y direction so they will not overlap with each other right px will overlap with px only py will overlap with py only uh, so px will not overlap with py right so that is the case so now what are the different types of overlapping and covalent bonds so i told you sigma bond right now there are two types of bonding sigma bond and pi bond so what is sigma bond students so this type of bond is formed whenever there is head end to end overlap of orbitals means head on overlap jab hoga along the internuclear axis okay this is called head on overlap so in that case the formation of bond that takes place is your uh, sigma bonding now you can see here if two s orbitals are overlapping can you see here there is this head on overlap between the two s orbitals and uh, along the internuclear axis so here this is known as a sigma bond formation 
now it can be formed between s and p orbital also right like one s orbital is overlapping with one p orbital so this is sp overlap and this sp overlap also results in the formation of sigma bond okay this is sigma right okay then after that we have pp overlapping also so this type of overlap takes place between the two p orbitals okay but they must be in same orientation right px px py py pz pz so this kind of overlap is also known as like this is called the yahan par electrons honge so this will be also known as a sigma bond so sigma bond is formed by the head to head overlap now what is pi bond now pi bond ke formation mein the atomic uh, orbitals they overlap in such a way that their axes remain parallel to each other okay the axis will be parallel to each other and perpendicular to the internuclear axis okay so this is your internuclear axis okay now you can see how these p orbitals will form pi bond so here you can see that uh, this is the sidewise overlap okay sidewise overlap hoga like this okay sidewise overlap hoga here you can say like this and so what is happening their axes are this is the axis so their axes are remaining parallel to each other ye dono axes parallel hai but they are perpendicular to the internuclear axis okay this is the internuclear axis iske wo perpendicular hai so this is how pi bonding happens so sigma bonding happens by the head on overlap but pi bonding happens by the uh, sidewise overlap of the orbitals okay so if we compare the strength of sigma and pi bond so it depends on overlapping ab dekho jab head on overlapping hogi to of course the extent of overlapping would be more but in this case see the extent of overlapping would be very less sidewise overlap mein okay so that is why sigma bond is stronger as compared to pi bond okay so You, this you must note that sigma bond will be stronger bond as compared to the pi bond because the in pi bond the extent of overlapping is very less. Okay, and whenever a multiple bond is formed, na like if you have a double bond, so double bond may please note that there must be one sigma bond plus one pi bond, and if you have a triple bond, so in that case you have one sigma and two pi bonds okay so one head on overlapping hogi and rest two orbitals will be having the sidewise overlapping okay so this is about the atomic orbital overlapping concept according to the valence bond theory now it also talked about the shape of the molecule by discussing the concept of hybridization so for that we must learn the concept of hybridization okay like for methane ammonia water pauling actually introduced the concept of hybridization so what did he say he said ki jo atomic orbitals hain they do not form bonds like that only they will combine to form new set of equivalent orbitals jinko hybrid orbitals kaha jata hai right so unlike pure orbitals the hybrid orbitals are used in bond formation okay pure orbitals are not used but hybrid orbitals are used now what is this hybridization the definition is it's the process of intermixing of orbitals of slightly different energies okay so as to redistribute their energies resulting in the formation of new set of orbitals of equivalent energy and shape ओके मतलब द ऑर्बिटल्स विल नॉट फॉर्म बॉन्ड एज इट इज बट दे विल इंटरमिक्स विद ईच अदर टू फॉर्म अ न्यू सेट ऑफ ऑर्बिटल्स व्हिच विल बी हैविंग इक्वल एनर्जी एंड शेप ओके सो देन दे विल पार्टिसिपेट इन द बॉन्ड फॉर्मेशन फर्स्ट हाइब्रिडाइजेशन विल हैपन देन बॉन्ड फॉर्मेशन विल हैपन फॉर एग्जांपल इफ वी हैव लेट्स से 1 2s ऑर्बिटल एंड 3 2p ऑर्बिटल ऑफ कार्बन ओके now they actually hybridize to form four new set of sp3 hybrid orbitals and 
that is involved in bonding okay so that thing will be involved in bonding now if i talk about the features of hybridization so the number of hybrid orbitals is equal to number of atomic orbitals getting hybridized like i gave you an example if you have one 2s orbital and three 2p orbitals so they will be combining how many total orbitals will be formed four hybrid orbitals will be formed okay number will be equal and the hybridized orbitals matlab ye jo four hybrid orbitals banenge they will always be equivalent in energy and shape okay and they will be more effective in forming stable bonds than the pure atomic orbitals that is why hybridization is happening and these hybrid orbitals they are directed in space in some preferred direction so they will be directed in such a way ki jo repulsion hai class between the electron pairs it is minimum okay so the arrangement is in such a way that the electron pair repulsion is minimum and we get a stable arrangement okay so that is why the type of hybridization now will tell us the geometry of molecule dekho vesper theory mein we just got to know about geometry but we did not know the theoretical concept behind it ki why this is tetrahedral why it is octahedral why it is trigonal bipyramidal but using this theory firstly we can find out the hybridization of the central atom to jo hybridization hogi that will tell you about the geometry and shape of the molecule okay so there are some conditions for hybridization so the orbitals that are present in the valence shell so they will get hybridized okay orbitals undergoing hybridization should have equal energy means aisa nahi hai ki like suppose i have 2s and 2p orbitals so they are going to get hybridized okay 2s or 2p like if i have 2p or if i have 3s 3p so 2p will not get hybridized with 3s or 3p so they must have equivalent energy 2s or 2p hybridize ho sakte hain 3s and 3p hybridize ho sakte hain okay not vice versa promotion of electron is not essential matlab electron excite hoke next orbital mein jaye that's not necessary okay and it's not necessary that only half filled orbitals participate in hybridization even fully filled orbitals take part in hybridization but they will be present as lone pair then ओके तो जब हम शेप डिस्कस करेंगे यू विल गेट टू नो सो इफ आई टॉक अबाउट हाइब्रिडाइजेशन सो एस एंड पी ऑर्बिटल के केस में स्टूडेंट्स देर आर थ्री टाइप्स एस पी एस पी टू एंड एस पी थ्री ना वॉट इज एस पी हाइब्रिडाइजेशन सो जहां पर वेन यू हैव वन एस ऑर्बिटल एंड वन पी ऑर्बिटल विच रिजल्ट इन द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ टू इक्वेलेंट एस पी हाइब्रिड ऑर्बिटल सो दैट इज कॉल्ड एस पी हाइब्रिडाइजेशन नाउ एस नाउ पी में तो हमारे पास तीन ऑर्बिटल्स होते हैं ना राइट पी एक्स पी वाई एंड पी जेड तो नाउ एस विल हाइब्रिडाइज विथ पी एस पी जेड बिकॉज दे आर ओरिएंटेड टूवर्ड्स दी जेड एक्सेस पी एक्स एंड पी वाई के साथ नहीं होगा ऑल राइट सो द सूटेबल ऑर्बिटल इज एस एंड पी जेड अगर जेड एक्सेस के अलॉन्ग होना है तो इफ यू हैव दिस एस पी हाइब्रिड ऑर्बिटल उसमें फिफ्टी परसेंट एस कैरेक्टर होगा एंड फिफ्टी परसेंट विल बी p character and now about the geometry if the central atom is sp hybridized so it will be having a linear geometry okay so these two hybrid orbitals they point in opposite direction along z axis okay can you see in this case like here we are having uh, this thing see the p this is your s orbital and this is your p z orbital okay here they have taken p x no issues so it will be directed along the x axis okay so this is your hybridized two hybridized orbitals now these two hybridized orbital will take part in bonding let's say if i talk about beryllium so the ground state configuration of beryllium is 1s2 2s2 like this okay fine this is the case in the uh, case of beryllium but now you will see ki yahan par to dono orbitals fully filled hain so how it will get hybridized so what happens is this is the ground state configuration so whenever bonding happens so excited state mein what happens is the electron from the 1s orbital it goes 
सॉरी फ्रॉम द टू एस ऑर्बिटल इट गोज टू द एम टी टू पी ऑर्बिटल अब टू पी ऑर्बिटल तो पड़ा है राइट देर आर टू शेल्स तो टू पी ऑर्बिटल इज एम टी सो दिस वन इलेक्ट्रॉन गोज टू द एम टी टू पी ऑर्बिटल लाइक दिस ओके नाउ यू हैव टू हाफ फिल्ड एस ऑर्बिटल एंड पी ऑर्बिटल सो दिस एस एंड पी ऑर्बिटल विल हाइब्रिडाइज टू फॉर्म एन एस पी ऑर्बिटल सो एस पी ऑर्बिटल वेन एवर इट विल फॉर्म देन दिस क्लोरीन एटम विल कम एंड बॉन्ड विद इट कैन यू सी देर आर दीज टू ऑर्बिट petals of uh, beryllium these two sp hybridized then the chlorine will bond with it and forming two sigma bonds so that's how we can tell the geometry of beryllium chloride would be linear from the concept of hybridization okay now if i talk about sp2 hybridization so again there will be involvement of one s orbital and Two p orbitals. Okay, there will be two p orbitals. So, how many total orbitals you will get? One plus two. Yes, three. Three equivalent sp two hybridized orbital. Now, these three hybrid orbitals they actually remain in the same plane and they form one twenty angle with each other. So, if it's sp two na, so there will be thirty three point three percent s character and sixty six point six percent. p character okay so like they will be in plane uh, like this all right so like they will be uh, in one plane having 120 degree angle like this you can see here 120 degree okay so this is how sp2 hybridization takes place all right this is one s orbital two p orbitals they will combine to form three hybrid orbitals can you see which are directed along the x and the y axis because uh, here you can see uh, there are these orbitals combining px and py so can you see how they are represented so they will be represented like this 1 2 and 3 having 120 120 angle between them okay Uh, so you can take the example of boron trichloride in this case like boron has this configuration 1s2 2s2 and 2p1 right five electrons so this is in ground state so in excited state what will happen so this is 1s so again the one electron will jump into the 2p orbital because this is 2s2 and 2p1 na to yahan se one electron will go and jump here now how many orbitals we have three 1 2s and 2 2p orbitals they will combine to form sp3 uh, sorry sp2 hybrid orbital and they will be having trigonal planar shape okay trigonal planar shape so this is how you can tell the shape in this case now the next type of hybridization is sp3 students so you can take the example of ch4 okay now if i take the example of uh, carbon so what is carbon 1s2 2s2 2p2 right so in the ground state just let's represent 2s and 2p only so this is the ground state configuration like this 1 and 2 but in excited state what will happen one electron from the 2s orbital will jump and go to the 2p orbital now you see all these four orbitals they are having one one electron each so they will hybridize with each other 1s and 3p to form sp3 hybrid orbitals so we will totally get four hybrid orbitals so carbon is sp3 hybridized in this case okay and you see this is how the uh, sp3 hybrid orbital look like now all these four corners like the four orbitals will be directed towards the four corners of a tetrahedron so it means the sp3 hybrid orbitals have a tetrahedral shape okay like you understood na sp ke liye linear sp2 trigonal planar and sp3 tetrahedral Okay, so this is how we will be getting a tetrahedron with an uh, bond angle of one zero nine point two eight degrees. Okay, so if you have this sp three orbital, so twenty five percent s character and seventy five percent p character would be there. So you must know about the sh uh, shapes as. now apart from these uh, sp hybridization students we have d orbitals also all right 
लाइक इफ यू हैव थ्री एस एंड थ्री पी ऑर्बिटल्स तो थ्री एस एंड थ्री पी ऑर्बिटल के साथ देर विल बी थ्री डी ऑर्बिटल विच हैज अ कंपेरेबल एनर्जी सो दीज थ्री कैन टेक पार्ट इन दी हाइब्रिडाइजेशन सो वी कैन हैव एस पी थ्री डी हाइब्रिडाइजेशन और एस पी थ्री डी टू हाइब्रिडाइजेशन इफ टू ऑर्बिटल्स आर इन्वॉल्व नाउ दिस थ्री डी ऑर्बिटल इज ऑल्सो कंपेरेबल इन एनर्जी विद फोर एस एंड फोर पी ऑर्बिटल सो इन दैट केस वी कैन हैव डी एस पी टू हाइब्रिडाइजेशन और डी टू एस पी थ्री हाइब्रिडाइजेशन लाइक दैट ओके सो डी ऑर्बिटल्स इफ दे पार्टिसिपेट वी कैन हैव डिफरेंट हाइब्रिडाइजेशन लाइक वी कैन टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ फॉस्फोरस पेंटा क्लोराइड विच हैज एस पी थ्री डी हाइब्रिडाइजेशन नाउ फॉर फॉस्फोरस द कॉन्फिग्रेशन इज थ्री एस टू थ्री पी थ्री इन ग्राउंड स्टेट ओके एंड इट हैज एम टी थ्री डी ऑर्बिटल्स ऑल्सो इट यूजली हैपन्स फॉर द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ थर्ड पीरियड बिकॉज थर्ड पीरियड एलिमेंट्स दे हैव दिस एम टी डी ऑर्बिटल्स ना सो इफ दे हैव दिस एम टी डी ऑर्बिटल्स इट हैपन्स तो नाउ वट हैपन्स इन दिस केस इज वी हैव द excited state so one electron from the s orbital 3s will jump to 3d now you have these five empty orbitals so that's the reason five chlorine atoms can combine and you will have sp3 d hybridization okay because now the five orbitals are available for hybridization to get five sp3 d hybrid orbitals and in this case you get a trigonal pyramidal shape okay like three will be in a plane having 120 degree angle and two will be perpendicular to the plane so it will be your trigonal uh, bipyramidal shape okay so that is the case here you can uh, explain the trigonal bipyramidal geometry of pcl5 using the sp3d hybridization now similarly two orbitals can also combine na two d orbitals like इन द केस ऑफ सल्फर यू कैन सी स्टूडेंट्स कि सल्फर के केस में यू हैव थ्री एस टू थ्री पी फोर ओके अगेन वॉट विल हैपन दीज टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स दे विल जम्प इन टू द एम टी थ्री डी ऑर्बिटल नाउ वी हैव सिक्स हाफ फिल्ड ऑर्बिटल्स फॉर दी सल्फर इन एक्साइटेड स्टेट देट आर अवेलेबल फॉर हाइब्रिडाइजेशन सो ऑल दीज सिक्स विल गेट हाइब्रिडाइज एंड यू विल गेट एस पी थ्री डी टू हाइब्रिडाइजेशन ओके एंड इन द केस ऑफ एस एफ सिक्स यू गेट ऑक्टाहाइड्रल जोमेट्री तो ऑक्टाहाइड्रल जोमेट्री में यू कैन हैव एस पी थ्री डी टू हाइब्रिडाइजेशन और डी टू एस पी थ्री इफ इनर डी ऑर्बिटल्स आर इन्वॉल्व ओके सो इन सम एलिमेंट्स इनर डी ऑर्बिटल्स कैन ऑल्सो भी इन्वॉल्व सो आई थिंक यू हैव अंडरस्टूड द जोमेट्रीज इन दिस केस यूजिंग द हाइब्रिडाइजेशन एस पी के लिए इट वॉज लीनियर एस पी टू ट्राइगनल प्लेनर एस पी थ्री इट वॉज टेट्राइड्रल दैन एस पी थ्री डी वॉज ट्राइगनल पिरामिडल एंड देन एस पी थ्री डी टू इज ऑक्टाहाइड्रल जोमेट्री सो यूजिंग द वैलेंस पॉइंट थ्योरी वी कैन क्लियरली एक्सप्लेन द geometries of the molecules with a theoretical explanation not just like the vesper theory where there was no explanation only just the shapes okay so that's why it is an important theory and the concept of hybridization also is very important now students let us talk about the next theory that is the molecular orbital theory it was developed by f hund and rs mulligan in 1932 so what are the salient features of this theory so it says that the electrons in the molecule are present in various molecular orbitals so valence bond theory was talking about atomic orbitals this theory talks about the molecular orbitals okay so the atomic orbitals of comparable energies and proper symmetry combine to form molecular orbital and whenever an electron is in an atomic orbital is influenced by one nucleus in a molecular orbital it is influenced by two or more nuclei because in molecule there can be two or more than two atoms na so the electron can be in an influence of two or more nuclei depending upon the number of atoms right so uh, we can say atomic orbital is monocentric while molecular orbital is polycentric all right there can be more than one nucleus now the number of molecular orbitals formed is equal to the number of combining orbitals uh, or combining atomic orbitals jaisa ki we saw in the case of hybrid orbitals right when two atomic orbitals combine you will get two molecular orbital 
तो दिस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट वन इज नोन एज बॉन्डिंग मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल एंड द नेक्स्ट वन अदर वन इज कॉल्ड दी एंटी बॉन्डिंग मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल सो बॉन्डिंग मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल की जो एनर्जी है इट विल बी लोअर देन दैट ऑफ द एटॉमिक ऑर्बिटल एंड इट विल हैव ग्रेटर स्टेबिलिटी एंड एंटी बॉन्डिंग मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल हैज हायर एनर्जी एंड लेस स्टेबिलिटी ओके so just like electron probability distribution around the nucleus is given by atomic orbital so we give the electron probability distribution around the nuclei by the molecular orbital and again the molecular orbitals are filled in the same way like we fill the atomic orbitals like in accordance with afpos principle pauli's exclusion principle and hund's rule now how these molecular orbitals are formed they are formed by the linear combination of atomic orbitals okay so from wave mechanics we know atomic orbitals ko we can represent by the wave function phi which represents the amplitude of electron waves we have seen na ki electrons uh, they possess wave like and particle like nature both so uh, now you know but we cannot solve the value of phi we actually determine the value of psi square which actually tells us about the probability of electron okay now molecular orbitals again we are so for molecular orbitals it will be difficult to obtain the wave function so what happens is we have this method of linear combination of atomic orbitals lcao now let's say if i am having a homonuclear hydrogen molecule it has two atoms a and b and one one electron in 1s orbital right so we can represent their atomic orbitals by psi a and psi b okay and what happens is the molecular orbital will be formed by the addition and subtraction of wave function so the molecular orbital will be psi a plus psi b so the two orbitals which is sigma and sigma star means this is the bonding orbital and this is the sigma anti bonding orbital i told you no two will be formed bonding having lower energy anti bonding having high energy so the sigma bonding orbital that is formed by the addition of atomic orbitals is called molecular bonding molecular orbital while the one that is formed by sigma star means by the subtraction so that is called anti bonding like here you can see okay so we were having these two orbitals uh, phi a of one hydrogen atom phi uh, phi b of psi b of another hydrogen atom they will combine to form firstly sigma uh which is psi a plus psi b okay and the anti bonding which is psi a minus psi b which is sigma star so of course hamesha the anti bonding one will be having higher energy okay can you see it is having higher energy than that of the atomic orbitals and bonding orbital so there are two electrons now the both the electrons will first go to the bonding orbital only okay like in accordance with the half power principle hund rule and uh, your pauli's exclusion principle so what are the conditions students the conditions are that the combining atomic orbitals again must have same energy to combination hamesha kab hoga hybrid orbitals mein bhi kab ho raha tha when they were of comparable energy so in the same way yahan par bhi whenever they are of same or nearly same energy they will combine means 1s can combine with 1s only but not with 2s because the energy of 2s will be more right okay but uh, if atoms are very different then uh, some things can happen now combining atomic orbitals must have same symmetry okay of course if it's 1s and 1s they will be having same symmetry around the molecular axis okay so z axis is taken as the molecular axis okay and they will not combine if they don't have the same symmetry means 2pz can combine with 2pz of other atom but it cannot combine with 2px or 2py because they have different symmetries right and the combining atomic orbitals they must overlap to a maximum extent so greater the extent of overlap greater will be the electron density okay now how many types of molecular orbitals are formed so they can be uh, formed sigma molecular orbital pi molecular orbital and delta so sigma molecular orbital are symmetrical around the bo uh, bond axis but pi molecular orbital are not symmetrical means if one s Uh, combines right linear combination of 1s it produces 
टू ऑर्बिटल्स विच आर सिमेट्रिकल अराउंड द बॉन्ड एक्सिस तो हम उसको लिखेंगे सिग्मा वन एस एंड सिग्मा स्टार मीन सिग्मा एंटी बॉन्डिंग वन एस ओके नाउ अब इफ वी टेक द इंटर न्यूक्लियर डायरेक्शन इन जेड एक्सिस एंड टू पी जेड ऑर्बिटल लेट से कंबाइन हो रहे हैं तो यू विल गेट टू सिग्मा मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल दिस इज सिग्मा टू पी जेड एंड सिग्मा स्टार टू पी जेड ओके नाउ अब इफ वी आर टेकिंग इट द इंटर न्यूक्लियर एक्सिस टू बी जेड एक्सिस ना तो जो टू पी एक्स और टू पी वाई है दे आर नॉट सिमेट्रिकल अराउंड दिस बॉन्ड एक्सिस राइट तो इन दैट केस टू पी एक्स और टू पी वाई जब कंबाइन करेंगे यू विल गेट पाई एंड पाई स्टार बॉन्डिंग ऑर्बिटल्स ओके दिस इज हाउ इट वर्क सिग्मा ऑर्बिटल विल ऑलवेज बी सिमेट्रिक अराउंड द बॉन्ड एक्सिस बट पाई ऑर्बिटल विल बी नॉट सिमेट्रिक ओके सो दिस इज हाउ वी कैन रिप्रेजेंट द एम मोलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल डायग्राम सो एनर्जी इज इन द सेम वे जैसे वन एस टू एस की होती है सिग्मा वन एस ऑफकोर्स सिग्मा स्टार वन एस देन सिग्मा टू एस सिग्मा स्टार टू एस देन पाई टू पी एक्स और टू पी वाई की एनर्जी सेम रहती है ओके देन सिग्मा टू पी जेड हैविंग हायर एनर्जी देन सिग्मा स्टार टू पी एक्स एंड पाई पाई स्टार सॉरी पाई स्टार टू पी एक्स पाई स्टार टू पी वाई एंड सिग्मा स्टार टू पी सेट ओके सिग्मा आएगा यहाँ पर सिग्मा स्टार टू पी सेट This is how. See, sigma one s one s uh, anti bonding two s two s anti bonding pi two p x two p y sigma two p z then pi star and sigma star. So, ye ten at least ten. So, आपको याद रखने हैं for remembering the molecular orbital diagram of various atoms. Okay. So, this is the order of energy. This is the general flow chart that I am showing you. And keep that in mind. कि जो anti bonding orbitals हैं, they have always more energy than the bonding molecular orbitals okay so how can we talk about the stability of the molecule based on that let's discuss that now class if i talk about any atom so if uh, in that case hum stability ki baat kar rahe hain molecules ki in terms of bonding and anti bonding electrons all right so if the bonding electrons are more than the anti bonding electrons so in that case what will happen the molecule will be stable because there are more number of bonding orbitals than the anti bonding orbitals but if the anti bonding orbitals are more than the bonding orbitals so in that case the molecule will be unstable because anti bonding have high energy na and their influence is more so it will result in net force of repulsion if equal now if anti bonding and bonding electrons are equal again the molecule is unstable because again the influence of electrons in anti bonding or molecular orbital would be more okay so now in terms of bond order students so bond order is actually defined as half the difference between the number of electrons present in bonding and anti bonding orbital okay half nb minus na so agar nb is greater than uh, na okay bonding electrons are greater than anti bonding electrons of course bond order will be positive okay so uh, your molecule would be stable But if the anti bonding electrons are more, so bond order automatically negative will come. If it is equal, then it will be zero. In both the cases, the molecule would be unstable. Okay. So for diatomic molecules, the stability is directly proportional to the bond order. Uh, like if there is a bond order three, it will be more stable than a molecule with bond order two and so on. Remember, we discussed this thing that why triple bond will be more stable than double bond. So from here, you can get the explanation. Okay, so and nature of bond, of course, uh, bond order of one, two, three means single, double, and triple bond. And bond length we have already discussed; it's inversely proportional to bond order. जितना ज़्यादा bond order होगा, उतनी कम bond length होगी. Means triple bond will having will be having the shortest bond length. This is again something very important. If I have diamagnetic and paramagnetic, तो हम उसको कैसे बताएँगे? so if all the electrons are paired it's diamagnetic in nature if some electrons are paired so it's paramagnetic means unpaired electron agar honge that will be paramagnetic okay to jitne zyada unpaired electron present honge utna hi zyada paramagnetic nature hoga all right 
So, इसको समझते हैं क्लास लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड इट विद सम मॉलिक्यूल्स नाउ हेयर वी हैव टेकन एच टू प्लस नाउ एच टू प्लस विल हैव हाउ मेनी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स जस्ट वन राइट ओके वन इलेक्ट्रॉन विल बी देयर सो so in h2 plus there is only one electron that will go to the sigma 1s orbital so how will you write the configuration sigma 1s1 okay so the bonding electrons are one and anti bonding electrons are zero bond order will be 1 by 2 because bond order is half into number of bonding electrons minus anti bonding electrons so half into uh, 1 minus 0 to so 1 by 2 but still it's positive means the molecule is stable and it only unpaired electron is there so it's paramagnetic similarly for now hydrogen molecule the bond order will be 1 because the configuration is sigma 1s okay two electrons the so bonding electrons are two so half into 2 minus 0 which is 1 now positive bond order again indicates that the molecule is stable and uh, bond order 1 means that two hydrogen atoms are connected by a single bond okay there is a single bond in this case and uh, because positive on bond order of 1 indicates that there is going to be a single bond and greater value of bond order of hydrogen then h2 plus indicates h2 will be more stable than h2 plus because h2 plus ka bond order was 1 by 2 and for h2 it's 1 and no one pair electron is there so it's diamagnetic so students if you are asked to tell about diamagnetism or everything this is how using the molecular orbital diagram you can do now for h2 minus it will be sigma 1s2 and there will be one more electron na so that will go into the sigma star 1s1 so bond order will again be half again it is somewhat stable and it is also paramagnetic now you see for he2 there will be four electrons 1s2 1s2 so it will be sigma 1s2 and sigma star 1s2 so number of bonding electrons are two and anti bonding are also two so what will be the bond order half into 2 minus 2 which will be zero so bond order zero means helium 2 molecule does not exist you know it's a noble gas so it does not exist as a diatomic molecule now for lithium again the configuration would be 1s2 sigma star 1s2 and sigma 2s2 because there will be 3 plus 3 6 electrons okay and all the electrons are paired means it is a diamagnetic molecule the bond order would be uh, here so okay i think it's written wrongly bonding electrons jo hain they will be 4 and non -bond, anti bonding are 2 to so half into 4 minus 2 which is 2 by 2 which is 1 okay the bond order is 1 and lithium 2 is a stable molecule all right so students this is how you can write the molecular diagram of other molecules and here you can say that it is a diamagnetic molecule because there are all the paired electrons okay so this is how we can uh, tell about the diamagnetism all right and uh, about the stability of the molecule using molecular orbital theory so these are the different theories that we have discussed in the chapter vesper theory molecular orbital theory and valence bond theory so i hope you have understood everything if you have any doubts you can let me know in the comment section okay and all the best for your bpt4 do well in that and if any doubts any questions you can ask us anytime and you can also join our telegram channel link is in the description so make sure all of you are joining it because we are posting some interesting quizzes and questions there every day okay so thank you so much students take care bye bye